Good morning, my wonderful friends. It's Laura. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. And all my wonderful friends that are usually here, I'm so glad you're back. This is a panda haul tutorial, as you're going to see on the screen. Um, and what we're going to do is some beginner friendly projects. So um, you're going to see in my bin how I've kind of divided up my Panda Haul items. I have my leather from Panda Haul. Set that out of the way. I have another project from Panda Haul that I was going to do, but um, I decided to start out my Panda Haul tutorials with some beginner friendly projects because guys the the items are so beautiful there is such a wide variety of items from beginner friendly easy to make ready to go they even have projects that are already made jewelry that's just purchase it and and give it as a gift on their website so i'm going to get out one of these absolutely gorgeous little um they call them sprites, pendants, or charms. I'm going to get one of these out. We're actually going to make a necklace for a little girl. And then I'm going to get out one of these prayer boxes. And we're going to make a necklace with this. Um, let's go ahead and do one of the copper ones. I want to tell you, when you open these and then go and close them, they do not come back open. <laughs> you have to pry them back open again. So, yes, once you open it and put in whatever you're going to put in there and close that puppy, it's going to stay. And let's see. Let's do three projects. What do we want to do? Um, I really want to paint one of these. But let me see. Do I want to do one just plain Jane? No, let's not do that. How about we do a pair of earrings using these? Hmm, what color do we want? All right, we have silver. How about some gold? And we'll get out these. And we'll make some earrings using those. There's so many items on their website that they're very, you can be very be beginner, much, very much a beginner and still make beautiful jewelry. Um, I'm going to pause you while I get all the components out that I need out to do this, these projects. Okay, so I am back and we are ready to do the very first project. Let me get it up into camera a little bit farther or just move it up. Um, we're going to need a lobster claw and I am using some crimp tubes and I've got just some beads from my stash. You can use anything you want. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. I'm just figuring this is for a little girl. They're going to want some purple and some bling. And there is my charm from Panda Hall. These are the um, uh, little sprit charms. And everything from Panda Hall is linked below. I have some beading wire. You can use any beading wire you want. And we're going to be using some silver ch uh, colored chain. And like I said, beginner friendly, we're just going to string this. Um, and what I'm going to do is so that I don't lose everything off one end, I'm just going to clip one end and I'm going just put it on the way that I want it on. We're also going to be using some jump rings. So I have them sitting here and I'm just beating, I kind of have it laid out so that um, the bigger beads are kind of have this real pretty um, shiny rondelle, crystal rondelles in the center to kind of give it some bling for the little girls. And um, then between that, I put these little faceted 
lavender colored and I use light colored of these frosted um, crackle beads and I use some dark colored um, so that it's kind of mixed up a little bit so that's kind of what that is going to look like very pretty very sparkly and then before I put the um, charm on because I really don't want the charm just hanging from a jump ring I'm going to use a very small bail this way um, the jump ring's not going to rub on this little beading wire it can easily slip through the jump ring and the little girl could lose her little charm and that's not going to make her happy we will use a jump ring to add the charm on with so I've got my bail on and I'm going to continue to string this project. And because I have it all laid out the way I want, I'm just stringing from one end to the other. And I don't have much of this white stringing, uh, white, um, beading wire left so i've been on a hunt for it i need to get some and there is that that's going to be the front of her necklace and i'm going to keep this very simple so we're going to measure this i want to make this about for a little girl i want to make it let's say about 16 inches if somebody older than that says I want it, I can always give them a an extender with a uh, hook on it and make it a little larger for them. So we're going to measure. This part measures four and three quarters inches. By the time I make little loops, it's going to be five inches. So we're going to need 11 inches of chain, five and a half for each side. So we're going to go measure that, get my um older clippers because i don't want to cut with my um good clippers can't you tell i cleaned up a little bit and now i can't find my old wire cutters oh that's because i left them over here where i was doing projects inside of allen's and all right, so one side is going to be a little shorter because one side's going to have a large lobster clasp and one side's going to have a jump ring. So I'm going to make one side five and a quarter. And one side five and a half. And that will make it so it lays even on the back of their neck. That will be the side that gets the lobster clasp. And then we're going to make this one five and a half. Go one up. Come on, go ahead and cut. Even these are like, no, 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 no. Okay, so we'll set that chain out of the way. And this is the side for the jump ring. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to get the jump ring out that we're going to use. I need a jump ring. And that one's pretty close, so we don't have to worry about that. Oops, and I need a jump ring to fasten my charm on with. So we'll get him out. Okay. We're going to go ahead and put our chain on. We're going to take one of our crimp tubes. We're going to put it over our beading wire. We're going to grab the chain that's going to go on the end with the, um, so it'll be the longer piece. This is the end that gets the jump ring. We're just going to put it right on the beading wire, put the wire back through. The um, crimp tube. We're going to draw that crimp tube up fairly 
tight, not real tight. We want to give this plenty of room to move. So that looks good to me. I'm going to make sure that my wires are laying flat like that. And I'm going to put that in the divot and I'm going to squeeze down. I'm going to turn my crimp to, uh, tool over, put it in the end divot, and I'm going to make a taco out of it. And I'm going to flatten it a little more. Check it nice and tight. I'm going to slide all these beads down. I'm going to hide my leftover wire in there. So if I need it, I have it. And there's that part. Now we're going to take this off. And we're going to do the same on this side. Crimp tube. Chain. Back through the crimp tube. And we're going to pull this all the way down. To this part of the necklace. And we want this to be fluid. We don't want spaces, but we also don't want um, this to be uh, poker straight. And I'm checking to see how much of a loop we have. I kind of want to make it a little bit smaller. So I think by the time I shove my crimp tube back down, check that out that looks good let's get our chain out of our way put it in the last divot yep they're laying that piece kind of pulled smush turn and smush and flatten him out. Double check. It's holding good. We're going to, well, let's use the good ones. <laughs> I'm going to trim this and see if we can get some of this to go up inside there. If not, I'll trim it short. Yeah, let's just go ahead and trim it short. It's too short to go up inside those beads, but it's got a nice, um, hold on it. So we're going to take, I did need an extra jump ring to put the, oops, they don't want to open. So I'm going to get out an extra jump ring. I've got my tools in my way. I need these. So we're going to take our bent nose pliers, hold on to the jump ring, this is probably about a four or five millimeter. I need to get a way to measure these so I can mark them. We're gonna open that. We're gonna put our lobster clasp on. I chose a big one so the little girls don't have to fight to open them. And then I'm going to put on the chain, close this up. Make sure it's got a good closure. And then I'm going to just take this one. This is the clasp that it's going to go into. Just put it right on the chain. Close that. Good. And there is almost done. Now we're ready to put on our... charm, but I think we'll put it on this part first, onto our bail. I may have to open it just a little farther. There we go. And then we want to put our charm on. i to put it on the other way so that when it's done, it will be facing forward. Close it up. Definitely want to make sure it's good and closed. We don't want the littles to lose their charms. 
and be upset. There we go. So we have a beautiful little charm necklace for the little girls. Very quick, very easy. Now let's go on to project number two, the earrings. As you can see, I've already started them. I'm going to spill everything out. And we have some dangles. And I used my one-step looper. And I will show you how I did it with the one-step looper. And then I'll show you how to do it without the one-step looper. So it's very easy, guys. Um, I want to get all these lined up. And I may have one extra one. Let's see. That's for that. Those two are made. One, two, three. I have a couple extras. That's okay. We might put them at the top then, maybe. Who knows? Um, I'm also going to need some beading wire. And this beading wire is the gold to kind of go with what's going to be going on. We're going to need two lengths of this. And be generous with yourself so that you have plenty to work with. So I've cut myself off two lengths. I'm going to get this to where I can put it back in the package without it rolling away on me. And the very first thing I'm going to do is we're going to get this beading wire in there. We're going to stick it down through from the top. There's a hole. Stick it down through. And now we're going to go back up. And we're going to keep a loop. And we're going to keep that loop just inside of that gold filigree where we can hang the dangles from. Make sure not hung up on the gold filigree. And we may want to give ourselves a bigger tail up there. So you can push it down with one side and push it up with the other. And then just kind of pull it up together. I want it just inside, right about, right about there. So we can hide the ends of our, where we're hooking these on, are up inside of there. So I'm going to go ahead. And I think, mm, let's see. Yeah, let's try that. Let's see how that looks. Let's put, let's grab one of our extra ones. Wasn't planning on doing this, but I have extra ones out here. So let's go ahead and do it. I kind of like how that looks. And then we're going to put a clamshell on. And this is a very important step. You want to do this before you start putting your stringing, your uh, dangles on. This is what's going to hold your wire where it needs to be inside. So we're going to do this and we're going to spread this open. So we're going to need to get in there. We probably should have spread it open before we put it on. Checking the position of that all the time. And we're going to double check that position before we get too much farther. Now, we're going to grab our 2x2 two two crimp tubes. And we're going to go ahead and put them on. And we're going to drop it right down inside of there. Just like so. So this is what we've got. And we can see our position of our um, wire up in there. You can see where everything's laying. We're just going to reach in there very carefully. Crimp that. We're going to want to mash that crimp down. We're not actually crimping. We're just mashing. That is going to hold those wires. We're going to give it a tug test. Whoops. We're going to reach up in here with this. Grab our wire, we're going to give it a tug test. 
good. And the reason I was doing that is because if I just tug, I'm going to pull this right back out. You want to hold your wire and then tug. So that's on there good. I'm also going to add some glue, which I have right here. And you don't have to do this. It is just better if you do, because we are working with something that could very easily come undone. And what I'm using is super glue gel. So I'm just taking a spare head pin and I'm going to reach in there and I'm going to put some super glue gel in there. Set all this off to the side. And then I'm going to probably should clip this first. I'm going to clip these wires really short. Just above that crimp. And I'm going to close this up. Now we're going to go ahead and um, I'm going to show you how to make these with a magic crimper and then without the magic crimper. And then we will assemble one of the earrings. Get this out of our way. We don't need that. We don't need the extra wire right now. These are the 1.5 millimeter loop magic crimpers. For those of you that have never seen it, I'm going to make, um, let's see, we have the single dangle and then we need to make one with one, two, three, four. So we're going to take um, two beads. Probably be easier if I just lay them down like that. One of these. And then two more of the gold spacer beads, which all of these can be found on, all you have to do is search gold spacer beads like I showed you in the previous video, how easy it is to search for something you need. We're gonna put these through, there's a hole back here. I'm gonna put it right in the, the jaw, just like that. And I have to get my hand resituated here. And I'm going to place all these up against there. And then, because I need extra space, I need to back this up just a hair and I'm going to start squeezing. And you can see how that is bending. And it's going to cut off that extra piece that we don't need. And it's forming the loop. And just before it closes completely, I'm going to back this up just a hair. Now I will tell you the better your eye pins or head pins you use or wire, the better your loops are gonna be and the more closed they're gonna be. I don't want mine closed, so this is perfectly fine. Now we're going to make some by hand. So I have my round nose pliers and I have a pin and we're going to pick up a bead, a gold spacer, a bead, a gold spacer, and a bead, just like that. So he matches this one here. And I know a lot of people bend over I, the, the um, pin. I don't, I kind of judge where I need to pinch this. I take a hold of this and I clip off, I land it in my dish over there. And then I take and I pinch it right here at the end and I start to form my hook. I let go, come back into it, and then I just continue to make it round. I come back to the very back of this by the bead, like this, and I pull him backwards. And it makes a perfect eye pin. Let me get my beads done out of there. So I have them done. Let's go ahead and finish this. You can see right up in here is my wire right there. And I'm just going to take and gently fold a couple of these out of my way so I can get in there a little better. I'm going to go ahead and 
um, open one, reach up in here, catch a hold of that wire just like that, and then I'm going to make sure that he is completely closed. like so. And now we're going to do that with all three of these. And it doesn't really, I don't think, matter a whole lot how you put them on here, but I will try to keep them in an order. And these bend back very easily, so you know, if you bend one out of place, you can quickly put it back when we're done. So there's that. And then we have the one with just the two beads, two spacer beads, and um, I think I'll put him on this side here. So it's like that. I'm going to move this up out of my way a little bit. He's kind of in the way of me working. Like I said, just kind of bend him up out of your way. Reach in. Fold it down. Just like that. Now, we have them dangling. Now we're going to reposition all these, bring them all back down. And then you can gently mold them with your fingers. And that's how this earring is going to look. And let's get some ear wires. Um, let's go with these. those out. Get them untangled. And at the end, I will, of course, go over everything that we've made so that you can see all of them. And get that on there. I may not have it open all the way. There we go. Now we're going to close it up. Get them back down out of the So there we have those. He's wanting to go up into the, there they go. So I will finish that off camera and let's go ahead and get this next project going, which is going to be a little easier. So again, it's going to be stringing project and guys, don't be worried about these. Let me show you. Once you open this, Put your item in these prayer boxes and you go to close this up. That is not coming back open until you open it forcefully. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this one up. I have just a few things to put on some wire here. Um, again, we're going to go ahead and use just, I think, this length that I already have cut and then I don't have to get back into it while I'm on video. Will be plenty. Um, Let's just go for it. We're going to need something underneath that. So I think we're going to get these little purple beads. These will go underneath that veil. So I'm just going to splash out a few. And I'm going to put something on the very end where my little clippy go. And we're just going to start by putting 
I think some of these on first. And then one of these. I don't know, this doesn't want to go on. Sometimes you just have to turn it around and put it on. You know, I hope those earrings I wasn't off camera. It's funny, these were actually on a beading wire. But I wonder how they got them out. There we go. All right. And you know what? I have some little these things here. Let's get some of these on. Maybe some gold. Let's put on a couple of gold. Um, these are harvested from another uh, piece of jewelry that I got that um, where I bought a bunch of new jewelry that the lady couldn't sell. So sometimes you come across things like that. Don't be afraid to, you know, buy a bunch of stuff that, like I bought a whole bag of stuff for a buck that she couldn't sell. And yeah, I like that. I probably should have put beads there. Let's, let's uh, pause a second and put beads on this end because that doesn't look right. Maybe just one of these purple ones between it. And give it a little bit of a different look. So it's not just those two together. And guys, you can do this with anything, anything. Or you can just string that on wire. I like that. So let's go ahead and put one of these longer ones. And let's do this again. Oops, like so. Come on, there we go. I really don't want to put a whole lot with it. I just want to give it something. Mm, let's go with a round one. And then let's do some of these. And then I'm just going to put this on. And this bale will help it ride right on top of those seed beads. That way the bale is not riding on the wire. And let's get some more of these. Get some more of these out. I think I want to put some more of these on. I have three, let's go with five. Around one. These are very organic shaped. I love them. So we're gonna put on one of these. Whoops, two gold. One more. One of the elongated ones. Oops. Yep, that's right. There we are. And then, oh, I did that wrong. Nope, I did that one right. This one is two gold. A silver. Come on. These with the tiny little holes, these tiny little ones are so hard to get picked up. There we go. And two gold. I 
So we're going to pick up this elongated, smoky looking bee, put him on. We're going to grab one more of these. And then one of these rounder looking ones. I really like how that looks. And you know, keeping it very minimal with this prayer box is pretty much key. I, I really like that. Now, one thing I did not do was get my chain out for this. I think this would be perfect. All right, let's go ahead and measure this. With this being a prayer box, I want this to be a 20 inch necklace. So we have four inches. So I need this to be not quite 16. By the time I add everything, I'll need about 15 inches. So seven and a half and seven and a half. So there's six. May as well get my chain ready. While we're at it, there's six. Seven and a half. So I need one cut a little shorter. This is for the clasping. And one right at seven and a half. So let's go and get six inches cut. And then an inch and a half more. There we go. And that's for the jump ring. Ta-da! All right, guys. So this is the prayer box. And we're going to go ahead now and get all this out of the way. We're done with that. We're done with that. We're going to go ahead and... Um, yeah, that'd be fine because we're going to put this on the end. All right, we're going to go ahead and put some... Um, crimp covers or clamshell covers on each end of these. You can find all these things on Panda Hall. So don't worry. They're, just look them up and you will find everything I've used here on the Panda Hall website. Whoops. Let me find the right color. Crimp tubes. These are two by two crimp tubes. I'm just going to put this one right at the very end. Just leave a little tiny bit hanging out. And I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to mash it. I'm going to flatten it right down. Make sure it's on there tight. Pull our clamshell up over it. Close the clamshell. We're going to scooch all these beads all the way down to the end. We want it to be loosey-goosey, which is hard to do when it's such a short piece. But it is what it is. And remember, this is a prayer box. So... It does want to hang a little lower on the neck, so that's why I'm making it a 20-inch necklace. And then, of course, I will have, um, for anybody that purchases this, it will have an um, option for them to get a extender. Again, clamshell. Drop down my crib tube like that. Oops, get down in there, little guy. Again, this is opened up nice and wide. I'm going to reach down in there. I'm going to make sure this is laying loosey goosey. And we're going to just kind of crush that crimp tube. We're going to give it a tug. It's on there tight. I'm going to grab my tools, which you can buy all your tools and everything also on Panda Hall. Clipping that off short, but not at the at very end of that crimp tube. Close it up. Now we're going to get our jump rings. And we're going to start with the very small ones. I need to get about four of the small ones out. And then I'm going to need one of these. Oh, maybe not. Let's go next size smaller. I like this size right here. He looks about appropriate. Let's go ahead and get this together. 
So this is the side that's a little shorter. It's shorter because of the dimension of the um, clasp. We're going to take and get my fat nose and my flat uh, pliers. I'm going to take, open up the small of the um, jump rings. We're going to put our necklace on. We're going to put our chain on. And this chain is sturdy. Um, I can't remember where it came from, but I used to have a lot of it. And we're going to make sure because the dimension of that chain is quite small. Um, check out Panda House Chain. Um, they have a lot of chain options. And um, you can get a lot of chain for like very decent price, guys. Especially if you're someone who does a lot of crafting for shows and things. Buying in bulk is exactly what you need to do. So there is that project. There we go. And now we're going to do this end. Again, open. Close. Oops, you almost forgot to put my chain on. This is the little bit longer piece of chain. And we're going to close it. Hold it and turn it just a little bit so I can get a better grip. Make sure that this is closed all the way. Perfect. And then I'm going to take the jump ring. That will be the closure. I'm going to open. Put it directly on the chain. And you have made gorgeous necklace. Now you can just put these on leather. You can put them on ribbing. You can put them on cording. You can put them directly on the chain itself. And we're going to go ahead and I forgot to open these. The coating on these um, sometimes make them very stiff. The first time you want to open and close them. So I sometimes have to get the coating to let me open and close them. But once I've opened and closed them a couple of times, they work wonderfully. Oops. And my fingernail is broken. So now I can't even work it. There it goes. And there it is. Oh my gosh, how gorgeous is that? So project number three. Hold on and I'll show you all of them. Okay, guys, I know this is a pretty long video, but I have to share everything with you at the end. This is the little uh, Sprite pendant, and this is how it looks. Um, absolutely amazing. Great little item for the little girls, and I love it. And guys, I know you guys are probably screaming at me through the camera saying, you already put that on there. I caught it when I was picking up. But you know what? These look like little Eiffel Towers. Oh my gosh, how cute. I'm going to lay them down so that you can get the full benefit of how they look. I did decide that they look better with the bottoms opened up. But they are gorgeous earrings, guys. I'm going to lay them in my hand so you can see them. How beautiful. I love these. They are very much dangly and very, um, very sparkly. I love how they look. So the other item that we made was with the prayer box. Kept it very simple, very simplistic. And guys, um, it's not difficult to do any of these projects. I know I said at the beginning, these were all very beginner friendly. And they really are. 
step out of your comfort zone. Even if you don't do beading and you just put them all on um, very simple chains. If you just take these and, and you put a piece of chain down through here and at the very end you hook, um, you know, put some beads down through the whole center of these. Very easy, very beginner friendly. It's not, it's not um, difficult. Just put chain on this and add your little fairy sprite, um, Tinkerbell looking charm here um, with the jump ring onto a chain. It is very easy. Look on to Panda Hall site. You'll find all of these items. You'll find all kinds of beads and supplies. And thank you, Panda Hall, for having me. And guys, all the information is down below. And again, you'll find links for saving 10% off your uh, first order. You'll find links to everything here. You'll find links for their, to download their app. You'll find links to, um, to all kinds of coupon codes and things like that, guys. I love each and every one of you, and I'll talk to all of you guys down in the comments below. Bye, everybody.